guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm really excited to share with you my latest sketchbook. This is my October 2021 through April 2022 sketchbook. And yeah, I'm super happy to talk about this sketchbook because I have a lot of interesting things in it. Um, I've got a lot of drawings and a lot of paintings as usual. And also in this sketchbook, you'll get to see two series that I'm working on. One is a series of self-portraits. I've been doing a self-portrait every week for the past few months. And another is a series of paintings from my recent trip on the Camino de Santiago, which I talk about in another vlog that you can watch here. Overall, I was really happy with the sketchbook because I think I've seen a lot of improvement in my drawing and painting skills. So let's check it out. Okay, so here's a sketchbook. Let's see what's inside. And I always find it hard to start sketchbooks. The blank page can be really intimidating. So with this one, I just started with a simple sketch of a seagull from life when I was at the beach. Here's a portrait study that I was trying to do, but I was feeling really rough that day. So I didn't really like how it was turning out and kind of just, <laughs> just gave up on that one. Um, here's a value study I did for my painting, uh, San Francisco roof Rooftops. And I was just trying to work out the light and dark pattern of the painting before I turned it into color. Here's some more figure practice in this one. I particularly was drawn to this picture. I think I just found a reference on Instagram. Um, and I liked how she, her face was very high contrast and then it kind of faded down below here to create almost like a spotlight effect. Here's just some doodling I did with a felt tip pen trying to create an organic feel with these shapes and just see what sort of design emerged. Here's another sort of failed <laughs> portrait study, um, although I think the colors are kind of fun. And um, here's a value study I did for another painting. Um, I think it was called Sunset in over East Bay. Um, so yeah, once again, just trying to work out the light and dark patterns before I turned it into a color painting. Here's some more doodling, just trying to work out different abstract shapes and colors and see how I felt about them. I always have trouble with abstract painting, but I think it's it's a good exercise to, um, to just understand how I feel about certain shapes and how I work on the design of different shapes. And then here's just a figure drawing um, value study. Here's a portrait of one of my favorite painters. This was just from one of her Instagram stories. Um, this is Colleen Berry, and I just really liked her pose and kind of the feeling of nonchalance and the, the whole shape of the shadows over here that was being created. And then this one, I think it was from a National Geographic photo. Once again, I thought the light and shadow shapes were, were really um, very, you know, it really captures the eye with these super sharp angles here and the super dark uh, darks paired next to the really bright lights. Here's some more value studies based on some photos I took in San Francisco. And here's a sort of just freeform mandala I was doing in felt tip pen, just to doodle and kind of have fun. This was a study I did of its twin sister's peak when we were in Colorado. Um, it was super cold, so I did the study from the car, but I wanted to get some sketching in. And then this is just more abstract doodling, playing around with the orange and blue contrast. Both of these are studies I did from National Geographic photos, and in this one I really wanted to play with the feeling of flatness versus form, so I really rendered the form in her uh, face and hand, but then I kept her body relatively, or the her clothes relatively flat so that her face and hand would really uh, pop out. And then this one I was more focused on edges. Um, oftentimes when I'm painting I play around with what edges are very sharp and what edges I allow to be soft, like here. And I've been trying to integrate that more into my graphite sketches too. Here's just some doodling I was doing, playing around with line and shape. Um, more figure sketching practice. I think this is also from a National Geographic photo. Some more abstract doodling. This one's playing around with different layers and feelings of saturation versus uh, desaturation. This is a study of 
uh, I think I can't really read the name, Luis Zabari. Uh, he's an amazing painter and I just loved how he designed this painting in terms of its lights and darks. So, um, so I wanted to do a sketch of it. Here's just some quick face studies I did. I think I spent like five minutes on each one. My intention was to fill up the whole page, but I guess I forgot. But I find it really helpful to practice sketching faces really quickly to figure out, you know, what are the essentials in the face and how can I get that onto paper um, as quickly as possible. Here's a sketch of Alcatraz in San Francisco. I did it from life on a sunny, warm, sunny day in the Bay. And here are two sketches from life of my cat Luna while she was relaxing and sleeping. Here's some more abstract doodling. And then this one is a sketch from life in Alamo Square Park. There are these really tall, beautiful, I think they're eucalyptus trees. So I wanted to capture um, just the shape of the trees and the way the light was hitting them. And then this, I think this was just a photo I saw on Instagram, but I really liked kind of the graphic shape that her hair was creating and her jacket. And I also wanted to create this feeling of the shininess of her zipper um, by playing around with the edges there. Here's a sketch I did of a portrait of Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, I was reading her biography and it's really amazing. If you haven't read it yet, um, I'd highly recommend it. It's super interesting. Her life was, was just really, really fascinating. Um, so I was thinking about her while I was sketching. And then here is a self-portrait that I did from life. Recently, I've been doing one self-portrait every week from life. So you'll see a lot more in this sketchbook um, or from life or from photos, but I've been trying to do a self-portrait every week. And so here's one from that. It was kind of hard because um, the lighting was really flat. So I was getting a lot of these just subtle color shifts and it ended up coming out very bluish, very cool, blue purpley. Um, but, but overall I was really happy with how this one turned out because I find painting from life to be very intimidating and painting myself from life to be especially hard. Here's some ideas I was having for a potential installation. Um, and then here's another self-portrait I did. This one was from a photo, um, so, but I was focusing more on getting those dramatic shadows since here I was kind of struggling with with the flat lighting. So I really wanted some dramatic lighting so that the shadow and the light area were, were very clearly defined shapes. Here's just some more abstraction, playing around with different shapes and colors. And then this one is a portrait of the painter Clifford Still. Um, I also watched a short documentary on him and his life was really interesting. Um, I'm not a huge fan of his work, but um, but I respect him as a painter. And in the documentary, there was this photo of him that I just thought was so cool. So I thought it'd be fun to do it in acrylic gouache and just kind of capture. He had this dramatic light shining above him, and then he has this dark form um, of the coat that he was wearing. So um, so I just wanted to capture that in uh, in acrylic gouache. And then here's another self-portrait of me. Um, so I was having, I was a little bit intimidated about doing a full color portrait and wanted to do something quickly. Um, so I just, I just did it in black and white to make it easier. But once again, I had more intense shadows in this one that um, made it a little bit less intimidating. Um, then here's a portrait of a Ukrainian painter. I forget her name. Uh, it's, I think it's Maria something, I don't remember. I'll uh, put it in the description. But um, but yeah, she did a lot of uh, Ukrainian kind of folk art style painting. And she's like one of the most famous painters of Ukraine. Um, and I just thought that she sounded like such a badass because she was a famous Ukrainian painter back when there weren't that many famous female painters. Um, so I just have a lot of respect for her. And I thought this picture was really cool. And then here's an, another self-portrait of me uh, from a photo again, this time trying to get into color. Here's a drawing I did um, 
this is from like an album cover I saw that I just really liked the photo and I wanted to play around more with edges and trying to figure out which which edges do I really need to show and which edges can I just let go and I really liked how I could just let this edge fade into the background and then your eye really focuses on the details over here um, and I just think it creates this cool sense of atmosphere on this side. Here's another self-portrait, once again with some more dramatic lighting. I was really happy with how the colors of this one turned out. I was trying to figure out also how much detail to put in my eyes. That's always like a big question that I have. Um, and I think I, I think I balanced that pretty well on this one. Here's another self-portrait that I was super excited about how it started. I really liked the colors that were going on, but I think uh, it was one of those paintings that the more I painted, <laughs> the kind of the worse it became. And I think I lost a lot of the, the freshness from the original painting, but I still really like the colors and I'd like to use this color palette again. And then here's another drawing based on a photo from National Geographic. I'm just practicing drawing the face in this kind of bright overexposed light in the background. So most of the features are in shadow, but you still have these like subtle variations between them that need to be, that need to be described. Okay, here's a drawing that I was super, super excited to do. I just had so much fun with this one. Um, it's by this, well, it's based on a photo by a photographer that I really like, whose name I also can't remember, but I'll put it, I'll put it in the comments. Um, but he's been doing this project called Portraits of Aodai, which are like these uh, Vietnamese uh, traditional dresses. And he just creates these really cool ethereal portraits um, that feel kind of dreamy and have this like flowiness to them. And so this is just a study of one of his photos and really just trying to capture these like beautiful gradients that he had going on in the photos and the sense of motion that he captured. So this part of the sketchbook is when I started the Camino de Santiago. And this was a painting I did from life of the cathedral in Oviedo, which was really hard because it has all these really complex details. And so I found it really challenging to try to simplify them, but I'm happy with some parts of it, like how this little door came out or this window over here. And yeah, it was, it was really beautiful. And then here's a self portrait that I started, but kind of struggled with. So I just <laughs> let it go. Here's another painting from the Camino. Um, this I did inside uh, the hotel we were staying at because it was super, super cold. And I was just looking out the window at the landscape and trying to capture the major shapes of lights and darks. And then here's another self-portrait of me uh, looking off to the side in graphite. Here's a study I did of the landscape around the town of Castro in, in Spain. And um, yeah, I did it, it was really quick. I had just about 30 minutes before it started snowing um, and also before my hands froze in the cold. Um, but yeah, I just tried to capture the major shapes and colors and um, I like the expressiveness. It has the sense of movement. Here's another painting I did of the landscape of Asturias. This one was from a photo um, and I just really liked the kind of feel of the Asturian landscape where you have a lot of this green, green pasture with these little white buildings with terracotta roofs that are kind of nestled into the landscape. Um, so I just wanted to capture that. And then as I, as I moved along onto the Camino, we moved into the, uh, the region of Galicia, which is kind of more industrial, less farmland. Um, and here is a plein air painting I did in the town of Ocatabo. And this one, I really wasn't excited to paint the town because um, it was just very industrial, not as beautiful as Asturias. But, um, but I ended up, I, I wanted to paint outside because the weather was so nice. And I ended up doing this little painting of the, the light reflecting off of the rooftops of some of the buildings. And actually I was really happy with how it turned out. Here's a value study I did when we got to the city of Lugo in Spain. And then here are just some studies I did of different color compositions based on some of the photos that I'd taken along the way. So with these, I was kind of um, trying to go away from like a lot of the naturalistic colors I'd been using in these other ones and try out some more playful color combinations with more saturation to see how they impacted the overall image. 
And these ones are kind of in the same vein. And I really liked doing these like smaller studies because um, it allowed me to focus less on the details and more on overall shapes and just the overall design of each image. Then both of these drawings are from when we got to the town of Santiago de Compostela, which is kind of the end of the Camino. Um, here's a statue that I was sketching. I did like two sides of the statue, and I really like to sketch statues because um, since they're all one color, you already have the light and the shadow shapes, or it's a lot easier to pick apart the light and the shadow areas because you're not getting distracted by different colors. And then this is just a really beautiful tulip that I saw. I didn't do this one from life. This one was from a photo. Um, but yeah, I just really liked the shape of the tulip, the kind of feeling of the, the petals kind of rising up towards the sky with this one flopping over. And it just felt very ethereal to me. So I played a lot, around a lot with the edges over here. Here's a study I did of a John Singer Sargent painting. Um, I liked the atmosphere of this painting and I find it super helpful to study the great painters like Sargent and Soroya and others. Um, but I also wanted to kind of play around with the overall image and some textures. So I thought it'd be fun to add some, um, some larger kind of color fields next to the graphite because both it's the color is really interesting and also the texture of the paint versus the texture of the graphite create a really cool contrast. Then here were just some doodles that I was doing kind of like biological with um, some of my paint pens. And here's another self-portrait I did. Um, this one was in acrylic gouache but it was really watered down so I almost kind of was using it like watercolor and I think it came out the effect was really nice. I don't do much watercolor, so I always find it intimidating, but um, but I did really enjoy this one and kind of the cool shapes that the really watered down paint created, especially as it kind of uh, mixed in to, as the paint, the different colors started to mix with each other. Then here are just some value studies uh, based on photos I took around San Francisco. I think both of these I ended up turning into final paintings. This one maybe I'll, I'll turn into a painting as well. And lastly, here's a self-portrait I did. Once again, doing it in black and white just to keep things simple and focus on major shapes. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the last of it. Overall, I was excited to see a lot of improvements in my drawing and painting skills compared to my previous sketchbooks. Here are some of my favorite pieces from this sketchbook, and I'm looking forward to filling up the next one. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please let me know, either like or comment or subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye.